The very first video here on this channel was actually an installation guide for the Adapt authoring tool on Windows 10. Yes, quite specific, yes, quite niche, but the channel has grown since then. But I remain a massive fan of open source software and specifically Adapt. But I know from your comments there are an increasing number of issues whilst trying to follow that guide. It is now approaching five years old. We've gone from Windows 10 to Windows 11, and things like Node have moved on a little bit. So this is an update to that video. This is how to install the Adapt authoring tool on an up-to-date Windows 11 system. Before we dive straight into the tutorial, a few quick footnotes, if you will, or prerequisites to following this tutorial. One, it is specific to Windows 11. If you are using Mac or any form of Linux, these instructions will differ slightly. However, you will still find all the instructions you need on the Adapt website or through the Adapt website to their GitHub. The second thing is to please make sure you have completed all updates to your Windows 11 installation. Make sure your drivers are up to date, make sure you have a stable internet connection, make sure your laptop isn't about to run out of battery, or if you are using a desktop, you should be using a UPS to make sure it doesn't suddenly crash. A lot of these processes are totally fine if something does go wrong, but a couple of them will cause you problems if you kind of crash out of them part way through. So really just do everything within your power to make sure you have a stable system. My last little comment is this is not a guide that is suitable to follow if you're looking to set this up as like a multi-tenant, multi-user situation on a server. That requires considerably more considerations around security and just so many other things that I don't want to go into in this video and to be honest are not my area of expertise. If you're interested in that, the best place for you to go, same as for any tech support around Adapt, is the Adapt Authoring Tool Forum. The community is fantastic. You do have to apply to be let in, which is great because it means it's not full of advertisers or anything like that. They will be able to support you much better than I, but I'll always try and do what I can. So without further ado, make sure your Windows is up to date, make sure you're on a steady power supply, make sure you've got a decent internet connection, and now let's dive into installing the Adapt Authoring Tool on your Windows 11 system. So first things first, I open two things. My browser of choice, Chrome in my case, and PowerShell. Uh, I leave PowerShell the standard directory for now as we're going to be doing some installing through it shortly. Uh, but first things first, let's take a look at the Adapt Learning website. There's loads of information on here and we're going to ignore almost all of it. We're going to go straight to resources and then documentation. We're then going to go to installation, which is going to take us over to the GitHub wiki for installing the authoring tool. Here is all the information, the prerequisites, the NPM commands that we're going to need. Uh, we're going to use this as a guide, but not stick to it absolutely. The first thing I'm going to deviate from is the order of activity, because I'm actually going to start by installing Node.js, not Git. Now, here it says to use the LTS release. That's very optimistic, shall we say? Uh, instead, we're going to go over to the standard installation guide, which assumes you're going to install through PowerShell. I think for most people, that's entirely pointless. Instead, we're going to go to the pre-built installer. We're going to open the version dropdown, and we're going to go down to version 16. This is simply due to compatibility with some of Adapt's older work. If we were installing this on a server, this would be a problem, but we're not, so it's fine. All we need to do then is hit the download button and it downloads like any other installer. Once the download's complete, we'll be able to open it up and run the installation. With the installer downloaded, we simply move through it, make sure you only accept the licensing terms that you uh, understand and agree to, choose where it's going to install on your computer, leave this as it is, we don't need to mess around with it too much, and then finally we're given this choice to automatically install the necessary tools. I tend to say yes to this. It's not essential, but it makes life a lot easier later on. The more of this we can do using installation wizards that we're familiar with, the less we need to worry about working in PowerShell. So that installation has been completed. What you'll then see is this pop-up just asking you to run the installation for the additional items you just agreed to install. You can press any key to continue. You'll then see this additional pop-up box of progress. You can see here it's already complete, so I can hit any key to exit. 
With that, it's safe to say that our node installation is complete. But before moving on, we just want to make sure of it. The first thing we can do is come over to our PowerShell window and enter node space hyphen hyphen version. When hitting enter, we should then see the version of node we intended to install, v16.20.2. We also want to make sure npm has installed. npm is a package management service for node. For this, we just type in npm space hyphen hyphen version. And here we see the version of npm that we have. So with node complete, we can close the node website and progress on. This is generally speaking when I install git. For this, again, I follow a very similar process. I go to the official installation guide, come down to the option for installing on Windows, and just go to the installation website. I really have no interest in working in uh, command line if I don't have to, so I find the correct option for me, the standalone installer for a 64-bit Windows setup, and I download it. Once the download's complete, I simply open the as normal, accept any administrative pop-ups, and then follow the exact same process, making sure that I understand what I'm installing and choosing whether or not I want to have things like icons on my desktop. I tend to leave all of this as standard as there's really no reason for me to change any of it unless I'm engaging in other software development or open source activities. I don't need to view the release notes, so we can now finish that. Job done. Next up on my list of things to do, next up on my list of things to do is grunt. Not make a funny noise, but install this CLI component. Again, I'm going to the website, except here, rather than clicking a download, I'm going to be using a line of command. I'm going to copy this, I'm going to come over to my PowerShell, I'm going to paste it in, and hit enter. You can see here that because we've already installed npm, this allows me to use this single command to install the grunt CLI. You can see here, We've added 56 packages to the device and audited 57 in just about two seconds. Zero vulnerabilities have been found. Grunt is now installed. This is what will help manage the movement of materials between Adapt and my database. Speaking of the database, our fourth and final prerequisite is installing a database software called MongoDB. For this, I'm going to head over to the official install guide, come straight down the page till I find the Windows install, and I'm going to use the Community Edition because I'm not an enterprise user and therefore don't need to be paying for things. As I scroll down the page, I can find the MongoDB download center, head straight to that page, find the community server, and download the MSI package. This is a standard .exe package, as we might know it. Now. Mongo is software that can be used for many, many things, so we are given quite a few options. The only one that is of massive concern to us, other than accepting the licensing terms, is that we want to do a complete installation and we want to run this as a service. This means that Mongo will automatically start when the computer starts. Here's an important note. If you have very limited RAM, in your device, consider setting this up as a local or domain user. Now this will mean that you will need to manually start the database every time you want to use it, but Mongo can use between 3 and 500 megabytes of RAM when running as a background task. So be aware that if you are using a low RAM device, this may seriously impact your device's performance. For me, I'm going to leave this as a service, meaning I don't have to worry about any of this other stuff and can just click next. Now, Compass is entirely optional. I personally have no use for it. Generally, it's used by system administrators and software developers, but it's entirely up to you. If you would like to have it, leave that ticked. And with that, I'm just going to click install. Now, during this installation process, you may receive an administrative pop-up asking if it's okay to install it. Obviously, just click yes, but I can't stress enough throughout this whole process how important it is to really consider if you understand what you are installing. 
If you are ever uncertain, don't just go with it because someone on the internet has told you to click the install button. Do some research. MongoDB is perfectly reputable, as are all these things, but if you don't know what they are, if you don't understand who made them and where they're from, do your own research online. It's really important to understand our own tech stack. So that installation is now complete, but I want to make sure that one, it's been successful, two, that the database is running, and three, that it is listening to the right port. That language is going to make more sense later on. To do all of that, I'm going to use a single line in our PowerShell. I'm going to type in netstat space hyphen an space divider space find str space 27017. 27017 is a port in your network or your local network anyway, and it's one that we're later on going to be using when installing adapt. When I hit enter, I can see that it is indeed listening. That basically means that it's scanning for information in that port, meaning it's usable to us. That's perfect. We're now moving into the stage where we're going to install the adapt authoring tool. And there are a couple of steps to this. The first thing we're going to be doing is deciding where on our computer all this stuff is going to live. So I open up file manager and I come to my C drive. This is the main drive in my computer and it's where I've decided I want my adapt installation to live. It can live wherever you want it to on your device, but I strongly urge you to use your fastest internal drive for this job. It will save you a lot of pain later on. All I do though is come to the folder or file where I want everything to live create a new folder and call it adapt. The savvy amongst you will know you can of course do all of this from the command line in PowerShell. I have absolutely no interest in doing that when it's so easy to do it using the graphical user interface. The next thing I'm going to want to do is navigate to this folder in PowerShell. Now in the old days I might have come in here and used the command cd space c colon backslash adapt. These days, to be perfectly honest with you, chances are I would go to the folder I just created, go into it, right click, go to show more options and then click open in terminal, which does that whole job for me in a new terminal window. As we spent the time to learn a little bit of PowerShell anyway, let's use this approach here. The first thing I'm going to want to do now that I've relocated to my adapt folder is to clone the existing adapt database. Now this is all about moving all of the information, the source code, if you will, for the authoring tool to my local device, basically making a copy. To do this, the exact line of code or command, I should say, is right here on the GitHub. You can just use the copy and paste function, pop it into your command line, ensuring once again that this is located correctly in the folder you do want it to be. Hit enter. And behold, an issue I wasn't expecting. Here, you can see exactly what happens when you're not really paying attention to what's going on. So here you can see the issue with installing something with PowerShell already open. PowerShell doesn't really pay much attention to what's going on outside of itself, and so doesn't recognize the git command because git wasn't installed when this PowerShell window was first opened. By closing it, opening a new one, I can use a simple command string to see if Git is properly installed. Here we see it is. And so if I open a new terminal still focused on this adapt file, use the same Git clone instruction, you can see it now works. This is a really helpful reminder that, to be honest, I regularly forget uh, to always reopen PowerShell once I've changed something that I'm then relying on to be able to use. So with the clone complete, we're going to run our component installation line. Now, once this gets going, you're going to see a lot of warnings about deprecated features. This is nothing to be concerned about at this stage. This is only something you'd need to worry about if you were installing on a server, as we discussed previously. That's not what we're covering here. If you are doing that and using this tutorial, once again, please stop, speak to a proper expert. Now, we're not going to attempt to put any of these fixes in place, because if you do, you'll find everything suddenly stops working. The next thing we're going to need to do is actually configure the adapt authoring tool itself. We do this with the node install command. When we hit that, we will see some very simple on screen questions appear. This script will install the application. Would you like to continue? We hit Y 
enter and it starts giving us information. First things first, server port. Now we're going to leave all of this default. If for whatever reason you are using any ports on your device for other kind of Internet of Things devices, home security cameras, ring doorbells, etc., please ensure you use ports that are not already in use. You don't want crosstalk or indeed blocking between your devices. So I'm going to use server port 5000, I'm going to use a local host, I'm simply going to call the data directory path data. Um, again, this is terrible practice if this wasn't just a demonstration installation. No need to change any of the URLs or indeed the master database names. Now, will I be using the full database connection? The answer there is almost certainly no. And you can see that is in fact what you'd call the default answer as it's highlighted in capitals. Again, we can use local host. Here's that database server port that we mentioned earlier. When we first installed Mongo, we checked where it was pointing and we saw server port 27017 listening. This then is the other half of that equation. You can see that number is replicated here. Now you can see here, you can see the database server user only specify if using database authentication. Now we're not doing that, so we're just going to go past all of those. And will I be using an SMTP server? The answer there is, of course, no. I can now hit enter. Now I've received immediately a Windows security pop up giving me information saying, hey, Node.js is using JavaScript runtime. That's absolutely fine. I would expect to see that. I'm going to click allow. Here you can see I need to set a unique name for my tenant. So I'm going to select master. I'm going to leave the display name as master with a capital M. And you can see here it's once again cloning the framework, installing node dependencies, and completing all the steps necessary to get the authoring tool up and running on my device. With the master tenant created, we now need to set up a super admin account. This account will be used to manage everything in your authoring tool instance and it's asking for an email address. So I'm going to use my email address and it would like a password. Obviously ensure your password remains entirely secure, share it with no one. And you can see it is now building the web application for us. This is the interface and all the connections necessary to get this working. We can see here, simple message, installation complete, the application can now be started with node server. And that is exactly what we're now going to do. So whenever you want to be able to use your authoring tool, you just come to this folder, the adapt underscore authoring folder and run the command node server. What this means very simply is I can now open up a new tab and go to localhost colon 5000, hit enter, and adapt loads up for me. You can see here I'm presented with a login screen. Now it is vital, vital that you remember your login details because you have no real way you'll notice of resetting them. So make sure you always put in the correct password, hit enter, and we're into the authoring tool. Now the installation process can have issues. The important things we've targeted are the correct version of Node.js being installed, making sure you open and close PowerShell in between installing all of your prerequisites, and making sure you keep track of where on your computer you're putting your files. In my case, the C drive, a dedicated adapt folder, and then the adapt underscore authoring file directory. I hope you found this video helpful. The rest of the ADAPT guides, part two and part three, where we were looking at kind of how the system worked, still apply. Please do let me know down in the comments if you run into any issues. Uh, I'll try and help you myself, and if I can't, I'll direct you to the right part of the forum to get the answers to your question. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with your social network, your colleagues, your peers in the industry, leaving a comment, and of course, hitting that like button. And I'll see you in the next video.